Hello, and welcome back to Outmouse Labs. My name is Vidi. I'm glad you're here. Today is primarily going to be a mechanics day, so for all of my adventures, this one is mostly for you. For my coders and plug-in folks, there is a bit of scripting around self-switches, and I will be doing another coding video soon. So what we're going to be doing today is making our invented encounters a little bit smarter. Invented encounters are the encounters that have a character that walks around the map, versus random encounters that happen every so many steps. So we're going to break this into a few parts. First, we're going to look at making a delay when the player escapes from an invented encounter so that the player has the option to move the character away from the monster before it becomes active again. We're also going to look at making the encounters one time only versus resetting when the player comes back to the map. After that, we're going to be making the invented encounters random for some extra juice. Finally, we will be using just a bit of scripting to improve how invented encounters give chase to the player. So with that, let's get started. Part 1. Better Escaped Actions So let's take a look at this event here. This event is a standard evented encounter, so it has an image, battle processing. It doesn't move very fast, and it's the same as character. Right now it's action button. If this was a real encounter, you'd probably set it to event touch, so that when it touched the player, it would launch the battle. Okay? We're going to go ahead and make sure that we've ticked can escape. If we win, right now we're going to erase the event. That means every time the player comes back to this map, this event will reset, so they can grind and get more experience. If you wanted to control the amount of experience possible, you could set this to uh, control self switch A and then have self switch A be another page that's blank. That would mean the encounter was only good once. I would only do this if I was running a game where experience was supposed to be very limited. If we escape, we're going to jump to the label escaped. And in our escaped label, we're going to set the movement round of this event to be uh, turn off collisions so that the player can move through them and then have them blink their transparency on and off for three seconds. Okay, very simple, it looks pretty good, it looks kind of like an arcade encounter when you would get hit and you'd blink for a few seconds uh, and be invincible. It's the same basic idea. So, pretty simple, but does look a little bit better already than if, you, if they escaped and then the monster would immediately come right back after them. Okay, let's move into part two. So for part two, we're going to be doing random evented encounters. So it starts out by rolling a random number between, in our case, one and five. And that's because I have five troops and want an even chance of hitting any of them. You could also weight the chance by having, say, three encounters, and one happens if the random number is greater than three, for instance, and the other two only happen if it's two and one. But for this example, we're going to have five encounters with five numbers, so it's an even chance. All right, let's take a look at what that looks like. So once again, we have an image. We have movement set to random with normal speed, same as characters, and this time we do have the event touch. We have our random number generator, which is just a control variable statement set to a variable, which I would call RNG for random number, making a random number between one and five. After it rolls the random number, if it's one, we're gonna do the first encounter. If it's two, we're gonna do the second encounter and so on. Just like before, if we win, we're gonna erase the event. And if we escape, we're gonna to go to jump to label escaped. Down at the bottom, we have our escaped label doing exactly the same thing. Now notice that we only made the escaped uh, movement route once by doing it this way. This saves us time and the computer a bit of processing power. This is called dry in the programming world, or don't repeat yourself. It'll help your rinse seem, you know, be less unruly. So feel free to use this wherever you're going to be repeating code over and over again. Okay, that's it for part two. Part three is we're going to improve the chase AI. So by default, we have it just set to random. So it's just going to wander around the map no matter what we do as a player. So let's fix that. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy the event page and paste it. This will create a second event page. I've already done it. In our second event page, we're going to change the movement type to approach and the speed to faster and frequency to highest. Again, we're going from random normal normal to approach faster fast, highest. Otherwise, it's the same. All of this is exactly the same. All right, next we're going to go back into our map making mode and go to regions. We're going to paint in the territory for each monster. So this monster's territory is this pin. This monster's territory is this pin. 
Um, the reason we're going to do that is that's how we're going to control when the monster becomes aggressive. When the player enters their territory, they're going to become aggressive and chase down the player. Going back to the events, I'm actually going to move this guy over so that hopefully they don't go straight out of their pin while they're in random mode. We're going to go in, create, we're going to create another event. This one's going to be a parallel. So we would be creating an event like normal. I'm going to call it battle controller, set it to below characters and parallel, and put it somewhere the players can't walk, like this fence post. First thing we're going to do is get the location info. So you can get location info on page three right here. Inside of get location info, we're going to set a variable. I set it to my number four, current region ID. And we're going to tell it to get the region ID uh, information. We want to get it from the player. Once we have the region ID of what the, where the player's at, and again, parallel, it's going to do this over and over again. So every time they take a step, essentially, it'll be checking the region ID. We're going to see if that region ID matches one of the pins or one of the territories for our monsters. If it does, in this case 120, we're going to run a script. So this is our one, only little bit of script here. These first two with the slashes are comments. The engine will ignore them when it runs. This is just for your benefit. So it sets the cell switch of an event, and then a copy of the actual command with the titles in there. So we need the map ID, the event ID, which cell switch, and on or off. To actually do that, we make it without the slashes, dollar sign, game self switches dot set value. So the, find the cell switches in the game and set the value on map seven, event three, self switch A to true. True means on in JavaScript. Pretty simple. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this up so you can copy if you need to, and I will include it in the description as well. If the make sure you have else set in your conditional branch. And so else, so when the player leaves that region, do the exact same thing, only set it to off or false. Do the same thing for each monster that has a territory. So our other monster has territory 121. This wait five frames is actually something I learned from Avery on RPG Maker Web Forums. It slows the event down just a little bit since it's a parallel, which saves processing power. Over time, it can make a big difference, especially if you have lots of parallel events. Okay. So, there's our event. Let's go ahead and see what all of this looks like put together. Okay, so we see them wandering around, doing their own thing, and if we go into their territory, suddenly, very aggressive. We step back out, back to random. Alright, this time we're going to get caught, so we get attacked, and we have a bandit and a centipede. We're going to try to escape from them. We escape and see how they're blinking for three seconds. We can move through them if we needed to as well. And now they're back to their normal behavior. This time, we're gonna go and see, go back into their territory, get attacked again, and notice it's a different monster. It's two centipedes. So there's our random as well. So that is how you make a, I think a somewhat better, definitely more interesting random encounter for your RPG Maker MZ game. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Consider liking and subscribing, and happy gaming.